one of the big stories from that card on Friday was the light heavyweight tournament finale. It was uh, veteran Impa Kasangane going up against the rising star Josh Silvera, uh, who was, you know, essentially a PFL product. He was in our studio last year. And uh, Impa's story was incredible. Of course, you remember him from his time in the UFC. And wouldn't you know it, he comes in there as a part of the PFL Challenger Series, wins that fight, and proceeds to enter the tournament and win the light heavyweight regular season and then get into the uh, playoffs and then get into the final and win the million dollars. It's one of the best stories of the year, one of the comeback fighters of the year. Uh, this time last year, uh, you know, who knows what he was thinking as far as the future of his career was concerned. Let's ask him about that and talk to him about the big win over Josh Silvera on Friday night. Here he is joining us, Impa Kasangane, kind enough to join us. Hello, Impa, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How you doing? Thanks for having me, sir. It's a pleasure to have you on and congratulations on Friday. Does this does this feel real yet? Like have you have you been <laughs> able to process everything that has happened to you over the past year? That time to process for sure. You know, a lot of times on my own. I'm, I've been riding a motorcycle. I'm on actually on a motorcycle adventure right now. I got to pull over and got an opportunity to talk to you. I'm um, I'm so grateful. Like I, my standard for myself was to become a champion. That's all I wanted to ever do in, in MMA. It's a world champion in MMA, and I got to do it in the PFL, I think, which is the most challenging, rigorous schedule. So I'm grateful. I haven't had it. The, I, it's funny you say it's like yes and no, right? I, I, I recognize I'm a champion, but I'm already ready to get back to practice because I want to get the next one. So that's where my mind's at. What's this motorcycle tour that you're on? So I actually partnered with Triumph, Collaborative Triumph Motorcycles. They loaned me a bike, became a rider with their program, and I'm doing... Started in Lovettsville, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. Went back through D.C. I'm actually in Virginia Beach right now. We went from Richmond to Virginia Beach. I got to meet with the Navy SEAL and did an interview with him and talk, just have a good conversation and just ask him questions about his life. And I'm heading to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I go from Chapel Hill, North Carolina to Charlotte, where my parents live. I go to Knoxville, Tennessee. My brother's a basketball coach at the University of Tennessee. And then I'm going to go to Atlanta, Georgia, where the Triumph Motorcycle headquarters are and fly out to Ireland, and hopefully I'll be riding out there, too. I am um, fighting name is Chilobo, so I go by Chilobo's Trek, and I just want to share this journey and meet cool people along the way. So the fact that I get to talk to you on this trip is pretty cool to me. I really respect your work, and I'm grateful, and it's it's been a good time for me to ride along. You know? That is amazing. Uh, and, and how many miles total are you traveling? Well, it's an 11-day trip. I don't have the total mileage yet. I kind of just, because I'm, I'm funny, so I thought we're going to stay in Richmond, and my friend Jack Daly, he was owner of TRX, and he said, hey, I have a friend who's a Navy SEAL. He's a Navy SEAL for 37 years. He was an admiral, and we had to spend time with him, and I just wanted to ask him questions about his life and ask him for advice. So we just popped back over to, to Virginia Beach, stayed the night at a hotel, got it at 3.45 in the morning this morning. Wow. Went by his house, had some lunch, and now hanging out. So all prepping before this interview, and now, uh, I'm here and I kind of just go where the wind takes me. One of my, uh, um, my great friend, Cliff Barrett, he runs all like production and media and, you know, along with uh, Peyton, Peyton, Len, uh, Peyton Evans. And, uh, we're going to go to my friend, Joe, we're going to uh, Chapel Hill. He's going to see his girlfriend. We're going to go with my friend, Joe. He's going to see some of his friends. And I'm just going to explore and kind of get lost. Okay. I can find them, but that's that's me. I'm just kind of like riding around. You're not you're not tired. You don't want to just chill on the couch. After, I mean, like you you just went through a grueling <laughs> tournament. No, I, I I want to fight more. I wish there were more fights in the season. Really, wow. I think it could be like, I think it'd be cool to have like an eight fight season, ten fights. Right? You really want to make a statement. You want to do something that challenges other organizations and do something special, right? I think it's uh, it's not so much as trying to compete, but do things in your own way. So for me, it's like where the Warriors go is PFL. Like they say, build it and they will come. Hmm. So I'm happy I had five fights this year. And you know, I'd love to fight Nemkov and Nganu. I hear Johnny Eblen may come up. I believe my dog Aaron Jeffries, the next in line to fight Eblen, get that Bellator title. You know, whatever God's plan is. But I, uh, I love to stay active. I love to fight. I'm already ready to get back in the gym. I'm going to go work out tonight. I'm going to get off the motorcycle. And uh, I don't know. I, I just, this is, this is like a limited life, right? We don't get a fight be a journalist, live this life super long, right? And I think a lot of people kind of take it for granted want to take too many breaks. Mm. Yeah, my parents my parents work so hard. They, they put so much time in. So I'm not here to just be so comfortable. That time will come. And I, I guess I'll recognize it. There's somebody who tells me it, but I'm, 
I'm here to work. I'm here to work. I'm grateful I get to talk to you. I said, I want to get right on interviews. I want to get right to talking to people, you know, and, and get to just have cool conversations. I watch your show. So it's an honor to be here. And I'm, I'm looking forward to getting after like this motorcycle journey is fun. Like it's beautiful. The leaves are changing. It's freezing. Yeah. It's 30 degrees, 20 degrees, but you know, try and put me up with some great, great cold weather gear. And I'm in Virginia beach now and hanging out. This time last year, where were you in life? Let's see, what day is it? So it's about it's November 27th. This time last year, I was living on the farm now. I just got done living out my car on my teammate's couch. And like within the map, the, I was in my car for about six months. I was in my teammate's couch for about a month. Marquez, shout out to him, great guy. And then I moved to a farm in Doral, pretty much going into the Everglades. They had pythons and uh they, they weren't pets. We didn't, we didn't cultivate pythons, but they came on property. Uh, we had chicken, cow, cattle, uh, sheep. And there's peacocks that ran around everywhere for some reason. But uh, yeah, I was living on a farm in New York in the forest. I had a trailer, but I wanted to live off grid, keep things simple. You know, shout out to John Smith from Oklahoma State. He was a big, big inspiration for me to simplify my life. And I did that for almost a whole year. So with PFL and I have a house now in Delray Beach, but I still have my yard on the farm. Wow. Why did you have to live in your car for six months? And it's, uh, I've got just, uh, got distracted with life, right? I, I was in the UFC. I thought I was going to be there for a while. Three months later, I get cut after my last fight. I started working this executive protection job. And, you know, it was solid. I mean, I understand they're running a company, but at first they, what they said, you could fight. That was the deal. Then they go, uh, you have to pick between us and fighting, essentially. And I was like, okay, like I'm going I'm to choose where God's called me to be. I believe like MMA is my ministry. I, I love what I get to do. And it came down to me saying, you know, like I'm going to trust God's plan for my life. I barely had any more money. I spent everything moving to Florida. Had a cool apartment. Thoughts would be in the UFC for a long haul. Uh, it wasn't within God's plan. I'm so grateful the UFC cut me. Like it, it became a blessing. Look where we are today. At that time, it was challenging. I have a business in Buzz Refinery where I train people and clients and it's going pretty well. Then all of a sudden, like, I just didn't have any clients at like for months. So I just started money was dwindling and it was due to my lack of organization as well. I could like, I don't blame anybody but me. So for me, I went to my car. I was very at peace, right? I, I would still train. I'd, I'd go to Naples every weekend I could. I would work at a restaurant. There's a bar back at Kapow Doodle Bar. And I go see Cosmo Alexandre in Naples for a while until, you know, I started like, you know, really staying focused on the gym where I'm at. I, uh, you know, Coach Dieter really, like, took me in. Nick Lenz, Greg Jones is my main corner, right? And they just, they stood with me, Henry Hoof. And I was like, I'm not going to ask people for help because I got myself in this situation. My parents never made an excuse coming from Congo. So for me, I, I need to figure it out. You know, because there's no, like, you know, you get a handout in life where somebody helps you, but you're not ready to move forward. Like, I got to be willing to help myself. I, I, I thought I was going to get married, right? And things didn't work out. So I think I just kind of went to a pretty dark place. And I'm grateful. Like, I think they're a great person. But life just didn't work. And it wasn't the best for my life at the time. So I think I was just pretty lost, man. Like, I, I left the gym I started out in. I was kind of confused. Like, did I make the right decision to move to Florida? Uh, should I have stayed there? Like, all the training partners I had. Some of them I talked to. Some I didn't. Some I was really tight with. Some I never heard from again. And I, and I connect with people a lot that I love. So I, when I got to that car, it was just like, it was the only place where I could just sit down and be peaceful in that front seat, right? And I would Instacart stuff to my to the gym, eat. But it was probably one of the best times of my life, too. I wake up at 6, 5.30, get into the gym by 6 a.m. I was in the parking lot so nobody could see me. Hop in the shower, brush my teeth, and I start collecting money. It's like, how can I reorganize myself? Started working in accounting again, but I never made sure I missed training. And, man, like, I get a stand for you today as a champion, but... I never, I never lost sight of the goal. It was just like being patient, being patient and getting reorganized. And that's what, that's what got me there. It was like the, the lack of organization, the lack of patience. And now uh, I'm one of the better points of my life. Did your family and friends know that you were sleeping in your car? My family and friends didn't know. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't. Wow. There's no need to make excuses, right? Like you got to own it. To me, it's when I got knocked out by Buckley, I told people you got to, own the failure, you own the success. And for me, that's the same. So I own, I own the failure of that point in my life. It was my fault that I was homeless. It wasn't anybody else's. I have three college degrees. I could have done it, but I, every job that I wanted to do, they wanted me to miss training. So I said, that's not happening. That's just not, not, not now. If, that was, if God's plan was different, for sure. 
But for me, it became that, like, I knew I wanted to work with motorcycles. I knew I was going to be a world champion one day. It wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And if I, if, if I told my mom or my dad or my brother or sister, my mentor, Jonathan Logan, great friends, like, that I was sleep, uh, sleeping in my car, like, they would be like, we're coming on our way to help you. But I, I didn't need that at that time in my life. And I, I, I recognized that. And so it was like, how do I get organized? And, and I was working, man. I was working hard, you know, challenging myself. It wasn't a hard time, but it was a challenging time. And I think challenges help you become better. Hard times, you sometimes you put yourself through it or you have no other choice but to be in it. I had a choice, but I, I saw myself as a champion one day. And it was cool. Like, let's say, like, you, you go to the Buckley fight. I made mistakes that fight. It wasn't a lucky kick. He capitalized on it. Carlston Harrison fight. I wasn't as disciplined where I needed to be getting down to 170. I, yeah, I had staff and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure if I helped myself, he's a good fighter, I probably could have beat him. So I could have been 4-0 then. So, like, I just had to own where I could and see what I could control. And it really motivated me and inspired me. And then the security was patrolling the building. Like, this car's always here. And, like, they see me get on my motorcycle and I hop off, leave my car there. And uh, um, Henry Hoofs came up to me. He said, come talk to me. And I said... Uh-oh. Like, I don't know if I did something in the gym. If I left, he hates when the gym's messy. So I was like, gosh, I hope I don't leave something in the gym. And so I'm freaking out. And he goes, you sleeping in your car? And I, I didn't want to lie to him, but I kind of froze. And I was like, uh. He's like, it's all right. He, didn't, he never mentioned a word. Never made me feel any less. Challenged me in the gym. Talked to me, like, every morning. He just saw me hitting the bag in the mornings. And he was so, so loving that he called my teammate Marquez, who I, I'm, I'm so grateful for. And funny enough, going back to Marquez, I didn't really know him too well. Marquez's friend, Foz Whitaker, was my pro debut. We train together now. Won the fight. Fast forward to the Buckley fight. I get knocked out by Buckley. Marquez, I don't really remember him too well from that time. We've maybe seen each other twice in life. He sends me this song called I Will Rise by Benjamin Todd. And it's just like, he says, man, you got knocked out. And I didn't see the message until actually I moved in with him. Way on my Instagram. Because I got so many messages after that mm -hmm. Buckley fight. And I was like, dang, like, you have such a good heart, man. Who knew I'd be living with you one day? And he's like, you can have a room. I'm like, no, nah, I'll just take the couch. It's simple. I don't deserve, you know, like, I don't think, like, that Henry didn't want me staying. Henry didn't want me staying uh, in the car, right? But I also said, I, I don't want people knowing, I don't want people being like, oh, you can come live with me. Every, any single one of my teammates, I, I, I guarantee I'd kill Cliff if they knew. My coaches would be like, come stay at my place and get your life together. But I had to take ownership of my life. And I knew that at that time in my life, I wasn't in a healthy place. Marquez, encouraging, we laugh, worship, we'd be wrestling the house, we broke that apartment up, uh, hurricane season. But I was like, man, I'm gonna rebuild my life. And uh, looking at some master's degree programs now, part owner of a financial services company, my business is running well. I don't really need fighting money to live now, but I'm so grateful we got this capital. But it was due to that time and those people in my life. But if I, if I got a handout early on, I don't think I would have ever, I'd ever be where I am today. So. That was it. That couch, I used the recliner, and I was, I was pretty good. And I could make it to practice, and that's all I needed. The, the reason I ask you this next question is only because so much has been made about how much you won on Friday. When you're when you're sleeping in your car, like how, how much how much money you have in your account? <laughs> I was putting that like, some days I had like a couple thousand. Some days I was in the I was in the negative, man. Damn, I was bouncing, but I I, I was doing everything I could just to make training. I would. So at that time, I wasn't training as much. Well, I was training at the gym, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a fighter that really earned his place in the gym, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm so grateful now. And then you know, I met Coach Dieter Navarro and Nick Lentz and Greg Jones, right? Coach Greg Jones welcomed me to the gym, but I, I wasn't in place to, you know, ask for, like, the extra amount of time. You have to earn that. So I would uh, work as a bar back, maybe make 300 bucks, 150 bucks on the weekend. i drive over to Naples, and I would sleep in my car, and, just go train with Cosmo. Two sessions, you know, so nice. Give me a great discount. I sleep, train late at night, train like five in the morning. I go back and make it to church. And then I go to church and I tie that offering. So I was very limited resources. So I kind of just said, hey, you're going to be in the red for a while until you can make it. And everything went back into training. Instacart went to um, Sprouts. It's like a little grocery store here. I'm not sure if you have it or you are. But um, anything I could do just to make training so whether it was the right gear whether it was the training clothes or the food that i needed uh, 
necessities, right? Toiletries. It, was, right. it wasn't a lavish life, but man, I had the beach. <laughs> I had the beach, you know, in Florida. So that was cool. So that's just go hang by the beach and skateboard and ride around until I could figure it out. And then I just started saving money. The clients started coming in, re, uh, rebranded myself, got some great advice from Alan Diamond, who's my mentor. Uh, you know, man, like I'm in a much better place thanks to the people in my life. You know, and even like, you know, like, I didn't end up marrying the girl that I was dating at the time, but she helped me out that time too. You know, like she knew she was the only person probably knew actually at that time. And, uh, but my, my mom, my mom had a hunch, but I was like, nah, I'm good. She's like, why are you FaceTiming me in your car all the time? I'm like, well, I'm just, I'm just, I had a client today. Uh-huh. I'm sleeping, you know, like training, you know, coach got after it. Coach is bad at me. He kicked me out the gym today. You know, I, I would just make some stuff up. So, cause I, I mean, yeah, mom, I'm sorry I lied, but I didn't want her to worry. And uh, I knew I was going to make it, man. I knew I was going to make it. It wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. And that win was November 24th. And I'm putting that behind me. And I want to, you know, go claim these titles and go on to claim these titles and these next victories. So I just would write it down. I'd read my Bible. I'd listen to a lot of worship music. Reggae, I would train. I'd, I'd drive to Coach Dieter's gym. It was an hour and a half away. Right. And then I, you know, I really stopped going over to Cosmos. I just strictly stay within my trust and process. And I think that's where guys mess up. Like I do have the trainers and the coaches I need in my gym. It doesn't take away from anybody else, but I needed to be around people who saw me every single day. And I really think that became something that helped me expedite the process. So I'm grateful for that time. Do I want to go back to it? You know, people say you want to repeat it. No way. No, <laughs> no way. Not. But I'm happy here now. Just curious, uh, over the last three years, like after the Buckley loss or even this period that you're talking about, at any point yeah. did you consider quitting MMA and just say, like, this is just, no, never, not once. The thought never crossed your mind? Never. No. How's that never possible? About Man, my, if, I, if I told my dad I quit, I think he'd disown me. Wow. <laughs> and, I, and he should. Because my, my dad, they recently shared this, but he came to this country with $16 in his pocket, didn't know the language, was a bus boy, um, wanted to study engineering. His dad died when he was 13. They have like 12 siblings, you know, a couple passed away. They had everything. And then in Congo, when his dad passed away, he was a general, he was a, he was a, he was a military, he was a high-ranking officer, I want to say general. They took away everything from the house that they lived in. His uh, house used to flood in a poverty-stricken a poverty area. In the rainy season, his house would flood to the second floor. He would still study. He was still, he showed me his notes and they were impeccable from when he was in school at that time in his life. Like he meant it. And he was studying the house would literally flood. His brothers and siblings could tell you, like, it was terrible. He used to study with the kerosene lamp. And I'm like, I'm going to go to this guy and tell him, oh, quit. Like, it, it was never an option. And I have a little brother and sister. My, my brother is a basketball coach at the University of Tennessee. He was in Naval Academy for a little bit, played college basketball, he's getting his graduate degree. My little sister, she just committed to West Point. So she's going to study either accounting or finance or biomedical engineering. Like she's, very, she's the smartest one in the family. She's the main character. And I'm very proud of them. And if I looked at myself in the mirror and said, I'm going to quit, that that'd be like that'd be that'd be killing everything my parents worked for. My mom, she came to the United States, she was 19. Her mom passed away. My mom was adopted by a family member between Belgium and Congo. Not the best life. She was gonna become a doctor, you know, just like the person who was uh helping fund her education passed away and she was fo- she focused on nursing, you know, it was quicker for her to finish. And if I and if I ever went to them and was like, I quit it would insult and I think it'd be like a curse to the family name. Wow. So for me, it's like, there's no way. And I tell my mom, sometimes she's gone for 17 hours of the day at the 17 hour shift. I remember she used to work at two hospitals. She'd be doing further education and she never complained. Like there's not a time in my a life my mom's ever complained that I've heard verbally, like ever, like not. And she's tired. My mom and dad will come home. My dad will pick my mom from work. He takes her every morning to work. He comes back. He cooks. He cleans. He does it. He works from home. He has his own business. You know, he takes my sister. He takes care of her. He'll take my sister's hair out of her hair. Like when they like they put the little um, uh, weaves, twists in their hair, you know, make sure my brother's good. He does my mom's feet. Like he's a real man, you know, and he's a loving man. He's a tough man. He's a strong man. At the same time, too, he has, he makes no bones about, about how loving of a husband is. He's a man of God. So that's the man I aspire to be like. My mom... She'd come home, she wouldn't even make it upstairs sometimes. She would literally fall asleep on the couch because she's so tired, her feet hurt, but still never complain. And I owe it to them, I owe it to the kids back in Congo, kids here in the United States, around the world, like, I can't go quit. Like, for what? Because my situation's hard. I live in a first world country. I, I'm blessed, I'm grateful. There's stuff going on 
wars, kids getting killed, persecution. Like, it, it, and I'm gonna sit here and be like, yeah, because fighting is hard. I chose to fight. I, I, I like, I could go be a CPA, live a comfortable life. No, but like, when God calls you to do something, you stick with it, no matter how you feel. And like, you might be in a cave, you might be in isolation, but I think it's a, it's a perspective of depression. But it's, I wasn't depressed. I was just, I was full of joy. I really was. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I just like, and I didn't tell him. And I even after the UFC, my parents were like, do you wanna come back to North Carolina? I said, nah, no way. The best gym in the world is Kill Cliff FC, DK Fitness, and the best trainers, Nick Lentz, Dieter Navarro, Greg Jones, Henry Hoof, Saeed Saparov, uh, Stroud, uh, Dr. Peacock, Gerald Mearshart. I hope I don't forget Brian Roque. Uh, you know, Cosmo has been a big influence in my life, so shout out to him. And I'm grateful for the gym I came from, Coach Jimmo. He helped me get on this path. Diego Costa, like all these people. Um, I don't want to forget anybody in the gym. And I'm going grappling days, striking days, Angla, uh -huh. right? You, Sean Soriano, my dog. Sorry, bro. What do I look like quitting and being like, life is hard? It's not. It was, it was just challenging. So, like, I, I, I came here to dominate. I came here to be the best to ever do it. I have ways and I work. I have work that I need to get done. I'm not stopping anytime soon. And like me quitting was like not even a thought. People ask me that, but I was like, for what? Why? For, to, to say like, I kind of made it. I was just a kid. Like I started training MMA when I was 24. I started training martial arts when I was 24 after college. I'm 29 now. And I'm grateful to be, have this title, this team title. I'm not self-made by, by any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, I, can't, I came here to be the greatest. Like I, I have a couple losses on my record, so I have to work my way up. And I, I have to dominate the best. I want to take out Ngannou. I want to take out all the best of them. But, and I will. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a matter of time. But it's, uh, that's always been on my mind. I've been secretly focused on that. I burn the ships for that any day. You, you think Ngannou is possible? I mean, there's a big size difference there between you and him, right? You think that's uh, a realistic option for you? Living God is possible for sure. Life, like, look, I, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to force it on anybody, but I say, like, anything is possible with God, right? And God is a warrior. I met him once when at the PI. I think he's an amazing man. I'm very inspired by him. He wants to be the best. I don't want MMA to die. I don't want MMA to suffer like boxing is, right? I don't want fighting. I love warrior culture. And I believe the best of the best need to fight the best. Look at the four kings, Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray, uh, Tommy Hearns, right? There's a reason they were, they were known as the greats. They're willing to die. They're willing to come back home with a shield. They're willing to die on that shield, right? They're going to come back with their, they're willing to come back with their shield or die on it, right? Right. As a spark say. So for me, it's like, take that. I'm not here to go compete or test myself or try to win with the God. No, I'm going to go claim that victory. The biggest I've ever been was 245. We're going to talk about a size difference. He could be taller, but my heart, my spirit, like, I'm telling you, I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'll, I'll take him out. And out of all due respect, I would love to do the PFL in Kinshasa, where the Rumble and Jungle is, where my parents are from. I'll go to Cameroon, where his homeland is. I respect what he's done. I don't care. I'll, I'll fight him in Antarctica. And I hate the cold. I will gladly go anywhere in this world to fight the best of the best. If it's him, if it's somebody else. But I, w I want that because I'm not, there's no risk and there's nothing to be gained in playing small, man. And like, I'm not like, people might think, oh, he's just talking to talk. I'm, I'm not like, shoot, I'll, I'll do it for free. And if Nganu, if Nganu were to beat me, he keeps everything or take my whole purse. No, I don't no, care. No, don't say that. What are you out. crazy, man? No, do for I'm free? here to be Come the best, on. man. And then I said, I ask on the other side of that. I take him out, pay me fifteen million. Okay, if I, yeah, if I, <laughs> I like you know that. You know what I'm saying? So like, and, I, and I'll do it. I'll, I'll risk and put the bet on myself. I'm not a gambling person, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it on myself where God's called me to be. And it's out of respect because, like, I want PFL to be the best. I respect all my friends in the UFC. Like, I, Brandon Allen got a great win. Jason Jackson just became a champion. I'm not against any organization. Dana White called that I'd be a champion one day, so I'm very grateful. Like, I'm not against them. Like, that's so stupid to like compete and just try to be better than this guy. This world is too much in comparison. That's why kids, you see kids jumping off buildings and hurting themselves because they're just trying to compare themselves with the next kid. Little girls are mutilating their bodies just because they want to look like somebody else or be somebody, but they're beautiful the way they are. Like, why would I sit here and just try to compare myself with another organization and teach kids and people coming after me that you got to compete to try to be like somebody else? No, like, I'm going to be the best where I'm at. I'm going to build and they'll come. And like, I got to earn it. Maybe it's me taking out Nemcop, taking out these people, taking out a few heavyweights. Then Ngannou says, let's go. Okay. But like, I want the best of the best. 
Like I'm not here. Like I want it. I'm going to be the best of the best. And that's, that's it. That's my only standard. And people can hate me for it. They can love me for it. But I, I just want like, you know, for me, it's like, I don't have kids yet. I'm not married. I'm single. The day that I have kids, I want them to ask if I, if I gave them my all and I could say yes. And on the days that I fell short, they can understand why and that they can, they can follow suit in their own pursuits. And that's it. So like, Francis, if you're out there, I got respect for you, man. Thank you for being a great African champion. Thank you for all you've done. Let's get it, man. Like, let's get it. Let's let's fight in the cage. Let's do the PFL Africa inaugural fight. I'll meet you in Saudi Arabia. I'll meet you in Antarctica. I have all respect. I'll never disrespect you. I'm not going to be the person who's going to be out there calling you out and calling you out your name. I have respect for your mother. My parents come from the same motherland. I don't believe in borders. Africa is one continent, one people. Borders are just made by human beings, right? Politicians do that. But if you really like, you just walk across the border. Now we hate each other. That's not who I am. I don't see the difference in any human that I walk across, white, black, any other color. Like I just, I'm here to fight. I'm a warrior. I want the best of the best. And I want Francis Ngannou. I want Nemkov. Evelyn, I respect that they talked about it. I believe that's Aaron Jeffrey's fight. And uh, I respect all these warriors. So let's get after it. Let's do it all on the same night. Let's make it a, like make it a round robin. I guarantee I'll still get it done too. Well, I love everything about this, man. Congratulations. Uh, one of the best stories of the year. Supremely happy for you. Well done. Way to prove to people that you can you, you can bounce back from you know setbacks, public or not. Uh, very very impressive. And uh, what a revelation you are. Your 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 spirit, your heart is uh, is really impressive. So uh, much love to you. Good luck with the uh, the 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 motorcycle stuff. Makes me a little nervous, if I'm being honest. But good luck to you. Be safe out there, my friend. And uh, big 2024 coming your way. So enjoy it all and keep up the great work. Congrats again. Thank you so much. God bless you. And I really enjoy your show. So thank you for having thank me you. on. It's an honor. Thank you so much. I appreciate those kind words as well. There he is, Impa Kasangane, who won the light heavyweight tournament on uh, Friday night. What a guy. I mean, holy smokes. Uh, what a beautiful soul he is. We need more people like that, not only in MMA, but in this world. Uh, that was lovely stuff. I really, really enjoyed that. And, uh, and think it's very possible that he fights Vadim Nemkov next year. As he said, maybe not the Francis fight off the bat, but Nemkov is the 205 champ, and that's a really interesting fight. So good luck to him. And certainly we weren't talking about those possibilities for Impa Kasangane this time last year. That is 100% certain. And if you're a Bellator fighter who is getting picked up now and maybe has to go through the Challenger Series, there's your there's your motivation. You can be uh, You can be a million-dollar winner, if you will, uh, by this time next year.